welcome to yet another episode of John Works Too Much. Today, we are going to be cleaning up this uh, mess and we're going to be taking out this shower door and taking out all this faucet and tile and uh, replacing it with new stuff. So if you're anything like me, you probably sit around and wonder things like, how many stop signs are there in America? Or also if you're like me, maybe you're like, it's difficult for me to see something that's broken or damaged and not help fix it. Uh, so today we're going to fix it because somebody asked us to. Um, but David, do you have a hard time seeing stuff that's broken and not fixing it? Not at all. You just walk right by and don't even care? Oh, uh, well, no. I mean... <laughs> you just couldn't care less about anybody else's problems. I have a different perspective. Uh, for me, it's different. I, I look at something, I'm like, hmm. And even if nobody's looking, I'm like, ah, that could be fixed real quick, and I just won't tell anybody, and it just makes me feel better as a person. Also, if I see somebody that's hurting, then I do the same thing. I'm like, man, I could probably go help them out, and it would be pretty much effortless. But I'm glad that you have a different perspective. It's nice to hear other I think people. I was taking a little out of context. You know, <laughs> was it? I, yeah, it was. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good, though. Thanks, thanks for that. You're welcome. No, I mean, it just sounds like you're heartless, and I, I think that's <laughs> important for people to be heartless in the world. Uh, anyway, we're, we're really bad. Up, dog. Oh, oh yeah, what's up dog? Darn it! I just now got the joke. It's my shirt too and I made it. This is stupid. Uh, anyway, so we're gonna do this uh, this tile today. We do a bunch of these, but um, you know, you guys seem to like it, so we're gonna do this. Anything else we're gonna talk about, David? Uh, I think we're good. This yeah, is good I, for the first one. Can I brag you about my humility? Oh, please. I'm not gonna. Tell us how humble. <laughs> how, you, how humble I am? Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Later. So, uh, it occurred to me, I felt some remorse because uh, here's what happened. <clears throat> we posted the last video like two minutes ago and the news called me up almost immediately and said, we want to offer you a full-time job as an anchor. And I was like, why would you do that? I'm not clean cut and I don't have a degree or anything like that. And they said, well, clearly you were lying uh, when you said that stuff about David and we could tell that you were lying, but you were straight faced about it and we need people like you in our business. And I was like, wow, um, I immediately regret that and I want to apologize and like on second thought, never mind, you're done. So the only, the only news I want to report is uh, good news. And so in, in good news, light is not afraid of darkness. And that's really all I've got. All right. Hey, so um, it has occurred to me that I haven't showed you how to put in a shower faucet yet. And I know what you're thinking. Uh, John is not a licensed plumber, but we're in county today, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, so first thing, this is the faucet. This is the faucet body. So the faucet body sits like this, right? And this is a new one. This is your uh, hot's always on the left. So this is your hot water coming in. This is your cold water coming in. It mixes in the faucet. It'll come down because gravity goes down first. It's easier out to your tub. And then if you switch, if you pull this up, it stops that up, and then the pressure goes up, and then it comes out through the shower head. As you can probably tell, this shower head was what I call low. So if you don't want to be doing this number which I don't, then we're gonna raise the shower head up. So that's one thing we're gonna do. But this is the main shower body. So we're gonna put this in here and this usually has like an H for hot. So we know that's gonna go on the left. Over here somewhere it should say up and it does. So that's up, that's H for hot. So we know this fits in here like this and there's like a V that um, puts it in place. Then this thing tightens onto it. I'll make sure we're not crossing threads and that's really amazing. Now, this stuff is called pipe dope. This is technically called T plus two, but it's pipe dope and it's the same thing as Teflon tape, but only better because it's easier to work with. So we're going to put this stuff, anything with threads, you want to put this on. Um, some stuff, if it's got, if it's compression or if it's thin wall, like underneath the sink, then you don't have to, but as a general rule, you want to put pipe dope on anything that's got threads. So we're going to pipe dope this stuff up. And hopefully I don't get a phone call in the middle of this. Um, there you go. So that's all pipe doped. And then we get these things they are called uh, female adapters. And I'm going to show you, a lot of you guys don't know that if I had a dollar for every kind of gender there is these days, I would still have exactly two dollars. So you can say this is a male because it goes into something and this is a female because it accepts it. So that's a female thread and we're gonna 
tighten this on there and so on and so forth all the way around which is truly amazing you probably think is hand tight enough absolutely not if you want to have a big leak then sure do it hand tight but if you want to have it actually work then we're going to have to get some wrenches on here so i need one more thank god canoe he knows everything and he was like i'm gonna have stuff ready for you john and then he did and i'm like you're the greatest so if you guys need somebody to help you out and do amazing things and also sing to you he sings beautifully it's like angel singing uh, he serenades me a lot when I'm just sitting here working. I'm like, you know, I kind of feel down. Could you sing to me? And he's like, absolutely. And he does. And uh, No, I don't. It, he does it all the time. In fact, he proposed to me earlier, and I was like, Kanui, I'm not gay, but my boyfriend is so gay. He loves roosters. Um, so you want to tighten these things down? This will be a slightly longer video, but I'm going to show you, like, start to finish how to do this. And it shouldn't be really that long because I've done it before. So we're gonna tighten this sucker up. Hopefully you're strong and you use your man strength. All right, so <clears throat> now I've got that. And here it says up. So you can tell that's the upside, right? So we're gonna put this right here. Now, we've got this copper and you're like how do I know what to cut into David asked me that earlier good question first of all just for the record we turned the water off the street already when you solder pipes so this is copper when you solder pipes it ends up with these kind of bubbles down here that are hard and um, that's hard to cut into and get a straight thing and you want to have something that's clean so what I'm gonna do is come below that and see it's got an arrow on it this is a tubing cutter and I'm just gonna cut in here some water is gonna leak out it's perfectly normal don't don't stress it's gonna be okay Okay, so there's one size cut, and there is the other side is now cut. So now we're broke free of all of that slavery that's been holding us for so many years in bondage. All right, now we want to get, do I have it? I don't have it. This is pretty clean. Normally there's a wire brush um, thing that we can put on there, but it doesn't really matter because this is pretty clean. So these are uh, shark bite couplings and a coupling couples things together. So if you've got two different things together and you want to couple it, then this is it. And that's the way shark bite works. It's pretty simple. It goes on the copper and then you just shove it on and then it's good. And that's pretty much effortless. Okay. So <clears throat> the next thing we want to do, hold on a second. Next thing we want to do is we want to um, put our faucet in place, right? So we're going to need to get some screws, which I've got some right here. And then where your, where your um, drain and your overflow are, you want to be pretty much in line with that. So that's what we're going to do. And there's a couple screw holes right here. And we're going to screw right in to this piece of wood that I already put in place because I knew we were going to have to do this. So that's one. whatever one plus one is. So you can see that we're pretty much in line with that. <clears throat> and now we need to connect this, right? So cold water needs to get in here and hot water needs to get in here. So yeah, let's see that, that piece right there. Perfect. So this is a PEX, which is a truly amazing thing. They've got blue, they've got red, and they got white. Typically blue is for cold water and red is for hot water, but um, you can use either for either and it doesn't really matter. So then this thing cuts it and I'm gonna cut it real quick. I probably should have done this ahead of time, but I didn't. <clears throat> so, now we're cut on that. And on this one, I'm going to just measure ahead of time because I'm tired of being stupid. It's much easier if you do it the right way. So, jam that sucker in there. Then we want to get some elbows, right? So I've got these elbows right here, and then you want to get what they look like. An elbow looks like, see I got an elbow and it's 90, 90 degrees? That's an elbow and it's 90 degrees. That's, that's the logic behind that remarkable invention. These things are called um, crimp rings, and they're pretty important. So you put a crimp ring on, put the elbow in place, 
and then we want to get a small piece for across the two. So I'm just going to get a small piece of folks in here. We get some more crimp rings because I have bags of this stuff. I'll put this on here and on here, and then we're going to put that in place and put that in place. Okay, so that's not done. We need to get these <coughs> crimping, this crimping tool. So what happens is put this crimp ring in place and then this just clamps down and then that's done. That's as easy as it is, right? And then we'll do that here. And then here. So that's one part of it. <clears throat> now our pole's connected, so we're, we're coming from the copper onto the shark bite, shark bite to pecs. We got a crimp ring, an elbow, crimp ring, short piece of pecs, crimp ring, female adapter, and then we're into the faucet. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Pretty basic. Even a child could do this. Even a not very smart person can do this. And I say that because I do it, and so I'm not very smart. People look at me and they shake their head. And they're like, that guy's not very smart. And David does it all the time. Kind of gives me a complex. There are times when I cry alone on my big pillow while I'm singing Adele songs to my cat. So, <clears throat> we want to crimp this. Sorry. Sorry I messed up your camera work, David. And people that have to not throw up right now. And that's our hot water. So our hot water's now in. And that's really a beautiful story, too. Um, next. Where that's going to be, and it's going to be too close to where it is. We'll cut this. We want to come around here. Put this sucker on. Oops. That's right, I got it. And then like that. <clears throat> and then a couple of screws from over here. Get those. Perfect. Screw you. Oh. What he really normally says, hey, you want to screw? And I'm like, that's a little weird. But yes, I do. Um, so. The reason that we put screws in this because we want it to be anchored in and solid so that whenever you put your shower arm in here and your shower head sticking out, it doesn't wobble around, right? So that's good and solid, good and snug. This is good and snug. Um, and then we're ready. So the only other thing we've got to do is in here is our box of goodies. We don't want to make this mistake. Um, this is the actual shower. Um, a lot of times, these companies think that it's funny to leave it in the on position to start with, which is not funny. It's really can be devastating, especially if you turn your water on and go get lunch and come back a couple weeks later and then your whole house is flooded. But basically, there's some other parts that go on here, but basically this thing fits into place. Uh, and then you want to turn it to the off position, not the on position, right? So that would be off and then it gets cold and then hotter, hotter, hotter till it's all the way hot. So we want it to be in the off position. Uh, also, we want to put in um, 
a thing for your tub. I'm not going to do that right now because we're trying to get this video done. But basically, that's how you hook up a faucet, right? You want to cut into your copper, get a clean spot. Shark bite is the easiest way. You can also solder onto it if you want to, but I'm just showing you the PEX way because it's super simple. And then you can see what I did, and that's how it's done. So um, next time you see it, it'll be working. Hey, can you Oh, hey. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just cleaning up this. We just got done doing this green rock. Yeah. And uh, clean this up. We're going to get ready to put this tile on here mm -hmm. and get going. Uh, what are you doing? I'm, I'm just wondering, like, does, is there anything in the world that bothers you that you want to talk about? There is, actually. Let's hear it. Have you ever, like, been driving down, like, say, you know, pretty decent pretty decent neighborhood on a major street and you see these brick walls on each side uh, brick fences brick walls whatever you want to call them that just kind of go for that whole neighborhood section I do yeah have you ever wondered why the majority of the time there's sections of it that have fallen over or there's sections that are drooping I'm so sick of not talking about this yes I know exactly what you're saying you do Yes. Why do they even do that? That's what I'm wondering. I don't understand why they make those brick wall fences because every one I've ever seen, they never last yep. longer than four or five years and then they collapse. They, you need to build something that will last forever more. I like that. <laughs> just see what, I did there. what is it that you think would last longer? I think Trump built, he promised to build a wall, and I think he built like whatever, 48 feet of a wall or something like that. But what did he make it out of? I think he made it out of aluminum foil, and the, <laughs> then everybody asked the Mexicans, like, hey, what do you think about this wall? And they're like, it's okay, we'll get over it. Oh, well. <laughs> I think he made it out of brick. Yeah, it's just like those down, walls then. that we see that yeah. don't collapse it's because. I think that's what Trump's all about. Bricks? Yeah, he keeps throwing bricks up and they... He never makes it in the bucket. <laughs> if you live in a glass house, you can't throw bricks. I think that's how they're saying it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah, so... We should stop... All builders should say no to brick fences. Brick wall fences. Whatever the hell you call them. As a builder, I will do that from now on based on your words because you're smart. I mean, just think about it. You're driving down, every everywhere you drive, you see them. And they, they look they're always collapsing. They're always sideways. They're leaning. Yep. They look like crap. I agree. They might look good for a month. Yeah, but then what happens? They fall down. Crap happens. Yeah, and then it makes the entire neighborhood look bad. You drive past those inside that neighborhood. The neighborhood looks great. But once you get out, the brick wall that's leaning over, it's tilted it's just it makes the whole area look terrible i think we should ban them we should rid them rid of them it's easy for you to say yeah we should rid the world of them that's what i meant to say i knew you didn't know. hey there uh so we got the tile laid uh we got the shower door out and the new faucet in you saw that and then we put in green rock and then we got the tile laid and it looks pretty beautiful so tomorrow we'll get everything cleaned up we'll grab it we'll put in the shower door put in the shower head put in this um tough faucet which will look a lot like this Bing. and that'll be that so uh what else oh i know uh, at no point in my life do i ever think i'm planning to fail like i may not make it i might fail at this so <laughs> i think that really helps because no matter what in the world happens i'm like i'm gonna keep on going until i get this right and a lot of people give up and they're really close to success so uh i just never ever ever plan to fail and when something goes bad i'm like well i'll try a different way well i'll try a different way until i get it but i never am like well i guess i just failed that's the end of it um so there's that now also i just want to say for the record that years ago here's a good success story years ago i was like i don't care what anybody thinks I'm not trying to impress anybody, what do I care? And it's a, been a tremendous success. All these years have passed and I have not impressed anybody. It's really amazing. So stick with your dreams, kids, because one of these the days- The truth. <laughs> yeah, stick with the truth and your dreams because one of these days, maybe you can have such a beautiful story as mine. All right, so let me tell you a story. When I was much younger and much poorer, we had literally no money, like nothing to even buy dinner with. Like we couldn't get groceries, we couldn't get ramen, nothing. And I had a little bit of money and I went to the store- You couldn't to get even something. get ramen, nothing? No, we couldn't get nothing. So I went to the store to try to get something to eat and I came back and my wife was all What's like- What's up? Dog. Um, I came back 
And my wife's all like, where's the food? And I'm like, I've got something so much better. And I came out and I had a dog just like that one. And she's like, are you kidding? What's up? <laughs> What's up, dog? Uh, and she's all like, you took our last money and you bought a dog? And I'm like, babe, it's a golden retriever. It retrieves gold. <laughs> What's really, up? What's up, dog? <laughs> that didn't really happen. <laughs> oh, hey. So, um, usually I show you how to do plumbing, even though I'm not a plumber, with PEX. Um, but today we have to solder something because uh, what happens is when you put these tub spouts on, right, they're threaded on the inside. So they got a, a female thread on the inside. And then there's a male thread that goes into that, right? Well, the piece that we put on was too long. It was the old piece. And so we want that to be right here. We've already measured it and cut it, but here's how you solder. And it's pretty important how you do it. Now, this isn't something that we even really do very often anymore, but just so that you know how to do it. This has a wire brush in it. And so you wanna get it all clean. See how there's still like corrosion right there a little bit. get all that stuff off of there. Which is why copper is such a hassle and soldering is such a hassle and why PEX is so amazing and shark bite is so amazing. But nevertheless, we want it to be clean and shiny like a brand new penny. So fun fact, back in the Roman days, uh, the rich people had indoor plumbing and the poor people did not. And as the Roman Empire progressed, a lot of the richer people ended up having dementia, and it's because the pipes that they brought in the water with were lead pipes, and so they ended up getting lead poisoning. And that's um, something about what contributed to the downfall of the Roman Empire. Okay, so we get everything clean, which we just did, and that's amazing. Now this step is called solder, or sorry, this step is called um, flux, and I don't use this very often, so it's kind of yuck, but uh, basically you just kind of want to mix this up a little bit. And what flux does is it prepares the pipe. It's like a primer, I guess, for the pipe. So we gotta put it on here. And then I've already cleaned out. I got a coupling right here. Remember we talked about coupling. So this couples two pipes together. I've already cleaned that out. But then there's this other part and I'm gonna put flux on here as well. And then I shove that into the coupling. I shove that into the coupling. Then I want to make sure that I'm not doing the wrong things. It's real hassle later. And it looks like that that will fit on there and then tighten up. So that's good. That's what we want. And then <clears throat> now we apply some, uh, let me get this yuck off my finger. Then we've got, uh, where's the solder? Is it behind you? Hmm? Solder. Tell me I got solder in here. Oh, it's right there. Yeah, so then you get the solder and spool this stuff out. And then you got a torch. This is map gas or yellow, yellow gas. And uh, we want it to not be, um, we want to apply a lot of heat right here, but we don't want to obviously burn anything else. So it becomes problematic. And usually the fire alarms go off and stuff. how you solder, but it's a real hassle, right? So the concept is that you heat this up a lot and then the um, flux heats up and it primes it so that it can, so that the solder can stick to it. And once it heats up, then we get that in there and it, it makes a seal. And it's not just a butt weld, which is right here, but it seals it all the way through, right? It sucks the solder in and it should make a little drip underneath it. Can you see that underneath there? There's like a little drip on both sides. That means you got a good solder joint. So that's how soldering works. And now you know, yay. Oh, hey there. Um, so we got this done. Uh, we got the shower door in, it's really beautiful. 
we got all the tile in, it's a huge difference. We got all the grout done and everything's silicone. And over here, we have the new faucet and everything. It still needs to be wiped down, but looks tremendously better. So I just want to say that when I go swimming, I can definitely feel people dressing me with their eyes and it is embarrassing. Also, I want to talk to you about... <laughs> It hurts my feelings when people do that. I can hear them like audibly throwing up behind me, and I'm just like, mm. it's, it's, a, just, it's a mass projectile vomit. It, it, it is. It's like everybody there, and it's like people appear and then throw up because it's just that bad. Uh, so then I also want to talk to you about. Oh, don't! I won't. What do you want to talk about? Anything? Give us a topic. The bathroom is great. Okay, the bathroom is great. How was it yesterday? Not good. <laughs> less great. It was less great. But it's not how you start the race that matters, it's how you finish the race that matters. A lot of people start really well and you're like, wow. This is how you start, and this is how you finish. Oh, dang it. Anyway, I found that a lot of people start well and then they just fizzle right out. And that does you no good. But if you start well and then stay all the way through and then finish the race well, that's what really matters. And we did that. And this took uh, two series of 28 minutes for us to go from underwhelming to overwhelming. So Extraordinary. Extra extraordinary. It's like not just ordinary, it's extra ordinary. I think that's how you say that word. I think that's how you pronounce it. Crazy. I'm pretty sure that I'm right. I'm putting the correct and fastest on the correct syllable. Anyway, uh, that, that wraps this one up and we'll see you guys on another one tomorrow. Love you. Bye.